The Supreme Court grappled Tuesday with a core question when it comes to same-sex marriage. Does the state have a legitimate interest in limiting marriage to heterosexual couples? We'll hear argument this morning in case 12-144. We boil down the key points on the subject from a session that lasted 80 minutes. Charles Cooper, the lawyer defending California's Proposition 8 banning gay marriage, says the people he represents would be harmed, if not individually, then by... Injury to the state. The state would be injured, he argues, if marriage is redefined. Kagan later asks Cooper to explain further. How does this cause and effect work? Cooper responds, that's not the correct legal question. Rather, he says, it's whether redefining marriage to include same-sex couples would advance the interests of marriage as opposed to... Well, then are are you conceding the point that there is no harm or denigration uh, Uh, to uh, traditional opposite-sex marriage couples? So you're conceding that? No, Your Honor, no, I'm I'm, I'm not conceding. Cooper elaborates, saying it's too soon to know what the consequences of same-sex marriage would be. Scalia scolds him. I don't know why you don't mention some concrete thing. Scalia introduces the issue of adoption. If you make same-sex marriage legal, he says... You must uh, permit adoption. ...by same-sex couples. I take no position on whether it's harmful or not. But uh, it, it is certainly true that, uh, uh, that, that there's no scientific answer to that question at this point in time. Cooper agrees, saying it's up to the other side to prove... ...that it's beyond debate that Make there will be no way. harm. No harm to the children. Justice Kennedy says there are 40,000 children of same-sex couples in California who want their parents to have full recognition. The voice of those children is important in this case, don't you think? Cooper responds, There there simply is no uh, data. No data that proves such children would benefit from their parents being married. Justice Breyer chimes in, If allowing gay couples to marry would interfere with the vision of marriage as procreation of children, then what about sterile couples? Cooper responds that redefining marriage as a genderless institution will refocus the purpose of marriage away from children. To the emotional needs and desires of adults. Justice Kagan asks rhetorically if it would be constitutional to prohibit marriage when both people are over the age of 55. I can just assure you if both the woman and the man are over the age of 55, there are not a lot of children coming out of that marriage. (laughs) Scalia jumps back in. I suppose we could have a questionnaire at at the marriage desk uh, when people come in to get their marriage, you know, are you fertile or are you not fertile? (laughs) Cooper says his point is that marriage makes it more likely, should the union produce offspring, that those children will be raised by the mother and father who brought them into the world. Questions for the pro-same-sex marriage side focus less on children and procreation. Lawyer Ted Olson makes the argument that marriage is a human right that should be protected under the Constitution. This court is the one that has said over and over again that marriage means something to the individual, the privacy, intimacy, and it is a a matter of status and recognition. Recognition that both sides agree could have an important impact beyond California. Jason Bellini, The Wall Street Journal.